Right, so cats, flags, tails, hairs, anything that waves in the wind, we're dealing with the wave principle. Right? Cool, so that's one of the topics we want to cover today. Uh, so I want to start off by doing something relatively simple to start with. Uh, we're going to create a, a simple little scene to give our flag some context. Um, for example, one step for man. One giant leap for dog kind or something. Right, so we have that. Cool, so I'm creating a background here real quick. Uh, we call it the moon. So I'm going to create a background layer and paint my moon perhaps a shade of moon. And using my background layer, I can just paint on that. Right? Probably wondering why that comes up like so. It's because my background isn't completely closed. So let's zoom into a few parts here. Right? To find out what exactly is not closed. And we just navigate around here. See that this part is kind of open. All right, the next one is going to be black. I'll just flip those colors there. Just to check exactly what is closed. So that's fine, that's fine. Right, we'll just use that pen option there to go around. Background check. Source layer. Hmm. Whoops. Change that. Well, this shape or color. Right, let's zoom out a bit. Right, I keep pressing spacebar. <clears throat> Next, let's continue. Um, this moon thing ain't gonna paint itself. So one, that's one color here. Want some darker colors on the inside. Right, some parts of the moon are further away. So what we might do is just pick the color that we have here, make it a smidge darker. All right, so darker parts of said moon. And like I said, I'm giving this thing some context, meaning that I kind of want it to be not just the solid blah, but you want it to look kind of nice as well. So in some aspects, I might decide to use my same brush tool and paint in some of my shadows, like so. Because right, I'm feeling like I should do this for whatever reason that is. And let me just zoom in a smidge just to correct those that need correcting. Uh, let's pick that.
and you can now just choose the paint in TV paint uh, like so just something simple I'm not being extra fancy with it I'm just doing something relatively simple right some probably some in here as well all right let's proceed so that's one for the background more for the background um what i'll do is this I want to create like a simply atmospheric uh, look, a glow, an atmospheric glow if you want to call it that. Something that will work. Maybe something much nicer. And then perhaps we have that there. Oof. That's no good. Contiguous. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hmm. No. Hmm. Oh, that's what's happening, is it? So let's proceed again. Uh, one new background. Apologies. So call this outer space if you want to. Right, that's my context here. Right, one. Next thing, let's add to this, and we're going to create a wave principle. Um, we're going to use a flag wave. Right, so for example, I want to create an animation where this flag is waving. Uh, so I'm creating a separate layer, one for the Pole, right? Um, the color of that is going to be probably black or some other color. Um, I have it pop out here, right? And pop out here. Typical stock, right? And we need one for the flag itself. I like separating my still elements from my animated elements. Cool. I'm pressing spacebar too much, that's why that keeps coming up. Right, so let's get in there. Now, the way the wave principle works is that you're going to have what we call um, high points, low points. So, you also need to have a pin because if we look at a wave, let me just show you just as an example. Oof. Example. A wave looks like this. One, two, three, four. Right? Yes? Yes. Right? The opposite of this, on a different layer, I'm going to put it here, looks a little something like this. Right? If you were to in between it, what would it look like? Probably a straight line. Right, but that's not a wave. Because for a wave, you need the points to be moving forward as you go along. 
right? Right, so I have stuff like those. So let me show you what a proper wave looks like. Using this flag here. I will change the color to uh, probably a dark red. One. So that's one. And I also work with the top part for now. Why? And we think of our high points and our low points. So if I have a flag here, the pin point is right here. Where the flag sticks. We're going to animate this on, we could do it follow through or overlapping one of them for straight ahead or post to post, either one. Um, for now, I'll just stick with uh, straight ahead. So I'm going to pause what I have here for the stock itself. So that's going to be a hold. Next one, so one. Y'all see this? So for this to work effectively, here's what must happen. This um, this hill has to go forward, this valley has to go forward and it has to just keep cycling through. So if you think about it, um, let me just go about 8 frames in front. Let's say this comes forward like so, this part comes out like so. We want to maintain the length. Right, this goes forward like so. And just fits there. Right? Why you look so weird? Shh. Let's draw that again. One. Put it just a smidge closer. Put it fourth frame. Or rather, this frame here. Can you carry this down a smidge? Carry this forward a little bit. Carry this down a little bit. Carry this over like so. Stop there. Right, so that's going to be the first, second, third frame. It'll probably look something like this. This comes down some more. This goes forward some. That comes down. Right, like so. It keeps going. This part comes forward. Down. Forward. Comes off like that. You don't want to be extending this beyond a certain point. You know, when flags wave. So it's going to start looking like this now. Right? Of course, we're going to have some in betweens afterwards. So that part comes out some more. Right? And you always try to get it to look like it's going to fall into place towards the first frame. Right? So that's first frame, second, third, fourth. You kind of want to look like it's going to go back to this frame. So if I were to play it out now, our mark in time is zero. Our mark out time, to get to see if we're going to make it to loop, it's probably going to be from 16 to about 19. So mark out 19. Press play. And the reason why it does that is because it didn't quite make it there. So I'm going to extend this frame to about that much. Right? So very, still very choppy. And we're on the moon, so this wouldn't really happen. So, bingo. So let's not close that project. Let's go back inside. We're going to refine it. Um, we're going to look between them and get the in between. So, because I don't want to see all those frames that are going forward, I'll click on this light bulb that we have here. Light table parameters, and it shows you all the frames you can see ahead. All the frames you can see behind. We have practically all of them on. I'm just going to turn on the first two, first one and the last one. Right, so we have that. Now if you're doing in-betweens, what you really just want to do is just carry this part. You propagate this part a little bit more further along. 
So let's check that out again. One, two, three. So which frames do we want to have? Right, so the in-between of that, right, would look something like this is going forward, or rather this is coming down. This is going to be between this part and this part. This part is going to be between this part. You're going to have something like that. So it begins to look a little bit smoother. And here is the same as well. You find out what's it going to look like between those two. So the red is what you have before. Green is what you have going ahead. So one, two, it's in between those two, between those two. Something like that. Here again, shift K. In between these two. Right. Then we continue, shift K again. There's that. We move on again. Shift K. Remember, we want to get back to the last frame, which looks like this. So what I can do is just copy this frame. Oh, I can't. Are you mad, bro? Paste that last one. Do my in-between. I know it's going to go back to what green looks like, which is what our first frame looks like. So the in-between I have is right here. Put that there, put it in between here. Okay, there. Right? I don't like this part. Gonna have this part just swoosh down like that. And let's play it out again and see what it looks like. Because we just done the keyframes and the in-betweens, right? If you press play now, what's going to happen is that you have something looking more like this. Right? So that's how that part looks. But it's just one line. It's not a flag yet. So obviously, you know what we're going to be doing. No, we're going to be drawing again on the frame. <laughs> Basically, you'll see some identical copies of these. Now, you could be very, very, very resourceful and do this. Highlight this. You guys remember the anim brush? Yes. So you could highlight all these. Right? Remember how to make an anim brush? Bingo. So cut that. Highlight the layer that you're going to be using as an example I have here. And I do this. Cut all those things because I know it's going to be in this span here. Create an anim brush, of course, of course we are. We're going to create an anim brush. Um, how's that look? Wait, I'll have you know that um, I am just going to paste this here. Move across the frames. Oh my goodness, it's it's like a copy. Right, so that's the first frame. What else do we want? Do we want the same brush? Hmm. We could just do this. You guys remember how to press Ctrl C and just propagate? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we have so far. Who? No, it's. Yes, I, I kind of, I am aware. Just, just. Yes. yes, we had extra lines, so that's a problem with this. Right, so, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. let's jump back over here. So, you see, we can cheat it, or we can actually just draw it again. Let's just, let's just draw it again. Gives it more organic feel, right? Right, and I don't mind doing this as well. Right, so put that there, 
for eraser tool is going to be a very hard eraser. So that's not going to be there. It's going to be more like a um, tough erasers there. One of those tough erasers. Right, so my eraser looks like this now. Next one, we're going to draw it again. Oh no. So that's there. Draw that. Gives it more depth. Right, it doesn't have to match up all the way. Because it's a flag, right? That's one. I, I remember that you were. <laughs> yeah. So here, bam, bam. And then we just fix this one here. So it joins up properly. Well, well, well. Next one. Next one, that line is doing something there. Not very much, but we shrink it. Pull that down. This part's coming up like so. Pull that down like so. All right, we continue. Some ripply stuff happening here. This line again. Just to be a little more interesting with it. Right, you get more desires. Like so. Let's proceed. I forgot the land line again. Looks choppy, doesn't it? What, what, what? What about the watting? What? Well, it's the style of my flag, man. <laughs> Right, so you make sure you pin it. I have to be making sure I've pinned it because I don't want this part to be moving all over the place. Otherwise, it's going to look like the flag is, you know, kind of weird. Just making sure again that they're pinned to the right place. Right, last one here. Cutting that off. You know, this thing comes around like so. There's a thing here. Cool. Last bit here comes out. Right, we got that, we got this. Right, flags can be very flappy, yes, quite quite flappy. So it's gonna maintain that look and feel from the top. Like here's a little wrinkle thing here. Right, and we're done. Are we?
Hmm. Let's find out, shall we? Yes, we will cut that image out and press play. Too long for a flag? Like really? Yes. Let me address that issue immediately. It's fine, I've got this covered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do just this. Since y'all got a problem with physics now. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> There's a flag out of space. How does anything make sense anymore? <laughs> have that stupid little fan thing on the fan. That explains a lot. You still have it? And because I want this animation to be like, I'm gonna do this again. So I'll draw it again. And let me tell you why I'm drawing it again. Because I don't want my animation to die. Looks like you know that one thing is stiff yeah. and you know nothing else is moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yep, but I still don't want this thing to die itself. You ever watch those animations and they have that really choppy look? Yeah, shaky. So that's gonna be your little animation thing there. Um, let's see how this looks now. Now, if I play this out, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have this, it's gonna stop. How do we get this layer that we do the fan on? fan to actually keep playing over and over and over again you could ping pong it here what else tell it to loop yeah so we press play voila it's a fan well no this is being recorded. Watch it later. <laughs> Oops. I tell me what the problem is. 
That frame 12 is the problem. Frame 12 is the problem. See, remember, it's now on loop, but it's going to loop to here. Hold that whole frame. Do something else. So we need to just chop this out and cut it. Apply. Press play. Now we just turn on the background. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we had a background. Had. Had. So that's the moon, see, and um, well, this dark color ain't working for me, so. Hmm. Right? Just leave it this way. Press play. Ta da! Now you add a color to the flag. Devon will now come and demonstrate how to add color to this flag. Well, <laughs> right, so to add color to this flag, you could do it one of two ways. You could create a regular anim layer, right? Or you could create a background layer, depending. Now, the reason why there's a background layer is so you can actually separate your line art from your color art, right? It kind of allows you more control because if you were to paint your colors on the same layer as your line art, if there's any mistakes at all, yeah. you're going to have to do both of them over, right? So that's why animation is actually, you know, you separate everything into different layers. That's why we have layers in the first place. And in traditional animation, when they did it on celluloid paper, they actually paint or create the animation with the line art first. Then the background, they, when they're sure about everything and the animation looks nice, they paint on the, the colors and, and stuff. Right? Pays off, yes. So all the digital animation things that you're seeing, is actually based on traditional tools. Right? Otherwise, you know, like I say, if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't know where you're going. So this is how you can get the animation to be a lot smoother, see? Or you could even get it to be much, much smoother. Because you'll notice that in some of my cases here that I have, uh, let's zoom in a bit. Some of these could have actually had the lines behind them, you know? Right, so let's look at this again. Revisit this line. Do something like there. And you can use the arrow keys to actually just move and progress through the animation itself. Let's use your arrow keys to go forward, you know. You know, you know that's there. So you have to be like, oh no. Right, so then if you play it back, you get something looking relatively smooth. Now, some people ask, how come you get animation so choppy sometimes, you know? The reason why it's choppy is because we don't spend enough time getting smooth. So it's not the program. It will never ever be the program's fault why your animation is choppy. Trust me. It's just the amount of work you put in to get to be smoother. So when you look at animations like, you know, the Prince of Egypt, and you look at the line test with them, and you see the people moving kind of slow, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so smooth. It's actually because they probably took a reference shot of the person acting it out to see exactly how much frames it would take, and then did those frames, all those frames. That's exactly why their animation is so good. Does they spend the amount of time? Yes, they do. Right, so we do that. And that's only the flag wave. By the way, you're getting this again. Oh, you're going to get this to do. You're going to get an assignment to do with this. So I'm going to stop this recording now. You kind of get the idea of how to do this. Right, so I'll...